Hi, it's Dr. Steven Tubielli here, your urogynecologist. And in this video, we're gonna talk about anal incontinence or fecal incontinence. So um, when we talk about anal incontinence, it is the accidental leakage of stool or gas that can uh, occur in women. And uh, with uh, this condition, either it's an unwanted escape of air or unwanted escape of either liquid stool or solid stool. And uh, it's a very common condition. It affects um, up to 6% of young women and up to 15% of older women. Um, it uh, can impact quality of life because a lot of patients will say they cannot um, engage in their usual activities because they're afraid they might leak. They may be afraid to leave the house because they're not sure how they'll feel after they've had a meal. They may choose not to go out to eat with friends or family because they may have to run to the bathroom and not make it and then they, they're embarrassed by that. So as you can imagine, it affects the quality of life of many, uh, many women and, and the patients that I've cared for over the years, uh, it uh, has brought them to tears oftentimes in the office because they are very embarrassed by it. They think they're the only ones. And so um, it can affect up to 50% of women um, who are older. And what are some of the reasons why this occurs? Um, weakness in the pelvic floor muscles or a nerve um, issue is typically um, one of the major reasons. Um, how, does this, how does this occur? Oftentimes women who've had children, especially vaginal deliveries, can impact the um, sphincteral muscles that support the anus, that help to keep it closed. And when um, a woman has a vaginal delivery, those muscles are impacted, sometimes stretched, sometimes torn, and that can affect a woman's ability to hold in stool and or gas later down the line. Um, either uh, a, a, a tear that occurs during delivery or an episiotomy that's done, a cut that's done to facilitate or make the birth um, occur um, can impact the muscles. Uh, there are some patients who have issues with diarrhea and um, so when there's diarrhea definitely liquid stool is much harder to uh, manage and contain um, compared to solid stool so if a patient has issues with diarrhea then that can be a reason for fecal incontinence uh, we know there are certain medications that can actually also lead to fecal incontinence some um, diabetic medications that is a side effect of that there's some patients who've had uh, nerve issues or nerve um, issues due to a spinal cord injury or multiple sclerosis. And those um, are conditions that affect the way the nerves work. And when the nerves that feed the anus and the sphincter um, are not working properly, then that affects the muscles. And if the muscles are weak, they're not able to contain gas or air or, or stool. Um, and so those are just one of the uh, few reasons why women develop this condition. Um, and so when we talk about these conditions, what are some of the sim uh, symptoms that women feel? Oftentimes a woman will feel a condition called fecal urgency, where it's a sudden urge to um, a sudden feeling as if there's something down there. Um, rather than a gradual urge, they may have uh, difficulty distinguishing whether it's gas or stool. They may think it's gas, and but then it ends up being stool. And so fecal urgency is where there's a sudden urge and women oftentimes may not be able to make it to the bathroom on time for a bowel movement and then they have a leak or they may not feel it and it just kind of seeps out. And we call that fecal seepage where through the, through the day, there's maybe a little bit of stool that seeps out that a patient may or may not be aware of and then she only notices it when she checks her underwear or um, goes to change her undergarments. So this is a very common condition that affects many women. And when we talk about um, an evaluation, we want to do a physical exam and get a history. And so in the history, we're looking at what are some of the medical reasons, what are some of the surgical reasons, some women who've had pelvic surgery uh, and maybe a nerve uh, injury as a result, can, um, that can predispose to this condition. Uh, let's see, medications uh, can do it, especially any medications that uh, lead to diarrhea as a side effect, that can be an issue. Um, conditions that can affect nerves. We know diabetes being one, spinal cord injury, multiple sclerosis. Those are just a, to name a few. Um, prior surgeries that can um, lead to uh, changes in pelvic floor function or damage to the rectal muscles. Hemorrhoidal surgery, um, that we know that that's a risk factor as well. And um, we do a physical exam. Uh, we, uh, when we get to the pelvic exam, we talk, we look to see uh, are, is the uh, vaginal walls, are they well supported? Is the rectum well supported? Is there, are there any defects between the rectum and the vagina that can lead to uh, changes in the pelvic floor function? Um, is there a nerve issue that is keeping the sphincter from squeezing and working properly? And um, so those are some of the things that we do when we do a physical exam. In terms of diagnostic studies, what can we uh, additionally do? Well, there's something called an endoanal ultrasound, which is an ultrasound of the sphincter muscles. 
And even nowadays, some of those um, ultrasounds can be done uh, at the at the perineal. We call them transperineal ultrasound. And essentially, what we're doing is looking at and evaluating how the muscles are. Is there has there been an injury in the past that was known or not known or detected? Is there scar tissue there? That's keeping the muscles from working properly, the sphincter muscles, that is. Um, um, anal rectal manometry is another study that we sometimes consider that looks at um, how much can the um, rectum hold before a patient feels a, an initial sense of, of having stool in the rectum, um, uh, a strong urge to have a bowel movement per se, and um, whether she's able to hold it and whether the muscles are working properly and the nerves are working properly. Um, oftentimes, uh, we uh, um, engage other specialists like a gastroenterologist or a colorectal specialist. There might be the need for a colonoscopy to look and an anoscopy to look in the colon, look in the anus and the rectum and see are there any other conditions that can uh, be contributing to fecal incontinence. And so those are just some of the things that um, can be looked at. And in terms of solutions or treatments, um, you know, we always start with um, lifestyle changes, dietary, definitely increasing fiber in the diet is helpful. Fiber um, uh, pull, uh, absorbed water in the uh, colon. So when there's an adequate amount of fiber in the diet, ultimately it'll absorb extra fluid or water out of the forming stool in the colon. So finally, when it gets to the uh, rectum and the anus, um, it's more formed and solid stool is more, um, there's more of an ability to control solid stool than liquid stool. So increasing fiber is always key. Um, and normal healthy bowel habits, not holding uh, the, uh, you know, not holding it until the very last minute. Some of, of my patients, they have so many things, tasks they are attending to, and they end up holding their uh, stool until the very last minute. And we ask women not to do that, just have a normal bowel routine. Um, uh, having strong pelvic floor muscles is key. So doing those Kegel exercises that we talk about, and you know, I have a, uh, an adage of uh, 100 Kegels a day keeps the urogynecologist away. And uh, the point of that is just an easy thing uh, to remember that doing Kegels and doing pelvic floor exercises is key. The muscles that women would squeeze to stop the fl uh, flow of urine and or stop gas from coming out are the muscles that need to be exercised and strengthened to help uh, prevent leakage of stool and or unwanted gas. Uh, we sometimes will send patients to a pelvic floor physical therapist, a specialist who will coach women, our patients who um, to do those muscle exercises effectively if she's not able to do that on her own. Um, and they may also add some biofeedback to help women identify their muscles and help the nerves um, work better. Um, in terms of medical um, options, um, there are some medicines that um, women can take to help with this condition. Um, of course, treating diarrhea is important. So, um, you know, treating diarrhea and helping the uh, stool not go as quickly through the colon is, is key. So um, one of the over-the-counter medicines that we sometimes would recommend is Imodium, which slows down the gastrointestinal tract. It helps to increase the tone in the rectum of the muscles. And that can help women who have leakage of stool, especially if they have it after a meal or if there's some uh, if there's a trigger, then um, then taking Imodium can help to ameliorate that and help um, prevent that stool leakage. And lastly, there are uh, surgical solutions. So um, if the issue is there's a defect or weakness in the between the rectum and the vagina, oftentimes that may need to be uh, addressed because if there's a pocket of stool there because there's a what we call a rectus seal where um, stool is collecting in the rectum and then it then slips out and passes unwantedly, then that needs to be corrected. If the muscles are weak or are torn or they've been um, injured or damaged during childbirth, especially if it happens soon after childbirth, then that can to be reconstructed, that area um, can be reconstructed. We call it a perineal reconstruction and a, a sphincteroplasty where the muscles are uh, repaired and brought together again. And that can also help them work better in addition to physical therapy. Um, if we determine that it's not only a muscle issue, but it's really a nerve issue, then um, there's a um, therapy that helps to the nerves break up and helps the nerves to work better so that they can increase the tone of the sphincter and the muscles, and that is uh, sacral neuromodulation. So it's like a pacemaker procedure, a pacemaker device that's placed underneath the skin that sends signals um, to the nerves to help them work better. And that's uh, one a very actually effective surgical solution as well. So as you can imagine, um, it's a very common condition that affects many, many women and um, it's embarrassing, it affects quality of life. 
And so it's something that we tell women they're not alone. They are good options that are safe and effective. And seeing a board certified urogynecologist like myself is key to talk through um, these solutions, uh, evaluate the, the history, do a, a, a comprehensive physical exam, um, talk about the uh, safe, effective solutions, and then derive a plan that meets the uh, patient's needs. And so if you would like more information about this condition or any other condition, you can visit my, practice, my personal website, which is www.drsteven, with a ph, 2 com. So it's drsteven2bele.com. Um, or my YouTube channel, Dr. Stephen Tubielli. That's uh, and you can get some more information and actually watch other videos that I've done um, regarding pelvic floor health. My um, practice uh, website is um, Northside Center for Urogynecology.com. I should say Northside Center for Urogyne.com. And our office number is 470-325-1280. Uh, thank you so much for listening. Uh, it's a passion of mine to educate patients and let women know that they do have safe, effective options that can improve their quality of life. And if you need more information, again, uh, visit those websites. And I look forward to seeing you in the office and helping you feel better. Take care. Till the next video. Bye.